A wild game has appeared. A wild game. <laughs> so, guys, you guys have been asking about it all night long. The Evil Within comes out on Tuesday. Let's check out a little bit of video first. I know who you are. Who do you think you are? I know what you crave, what you fear. Will you be able to live with yourself knowing what I'm going to make you do? Too bad they dragged you into this. talk about after our recent ghost story <laughs> spooky, spooky yeah. scary uh somebody summoning the ghost to come forward i saw no yeah uh so guys yeah the evil within comes out on tuesday and it was originally supposed to come out in august of this year but there wasn't very good previews for the game actually back then and i have a feeling that had a lot to do with the delay but it does seem like they improved a lot on it the complaints back then were that the emotion wasn't there. That the main character kind of just walked through this terrifying experience and didn't show any tension or fear. Well, and did it, you listen to him? He created this world or yes, something. Yes, you cannot keep me here. I'm sorry, the reason I laughed is it because it reminded me of a scene from Tropic Thunder at the beginning where he's like, Do you know who you are? I know who I am. <laughs> I, you, yeah, I know you you think I know who I am. <laughs> the, the voice, the, the voice he's putting on too, for sure. It reminds me a little bit of like Freddy Krueger in a way. Okay. Like, like this is his nightmare world that he's created, and so you can't escape it. I mean, it, it's a terrifying concept, and it, obviously it's done by Shinji Mikami, who has worked on the Resident Evil series. He's like the father of the Resident Evil series, but he also worked on Beautiful Joe and Devil May Cry and a few others as well. He's, he's really just a legend within the industry when it comes to survival horror especially so that's why a lot of people were very excited for this game and it sounds like the delay did it well so it, it's coming out as i said on tuesday for pc ps4 xbox one ps3 and xbox 360 it's cross-generational and it is a third person survival horror developed by tango game works and published by bethesda softworks um as i said it's done by mikami i'll skip over that but the plot you play as the guy you saw here is a detective. His name is Sebastian Castellonos, and he is investigating a murder crime at the very beginning of the game. But when he's encountering, or he's investigating the scene, he encounters a malevolent force, and that is the character that we saw in the trailer there, the one with the uh, Rorschach voice, voice, if you want to call it that, or Tropic Thunder voice, that too. I guess. I guess. Um, Robert Downey Jr. Definitely. Beautiful so guy. he goes in with his fellow officers at the beginning of the game. I think this is actually right here, the beginning opening moments. And his colleagues, his partners, whatever, are attacked. The main character is knocked unconscious. And when he wakes, he is stuck in this world that was created by the malevolent force and is unable to leave. So it's all about trying to figure out and survive long enough to figure out what this malevolent force is so that you can escape. And uh, that's the main gist of the game. Gameplay-wise, though, it's a little bit like The Last of Us in a lot of ways, but more survival horror than survival action. It has the whole crafting system where everything's rare. You have to go around the environment, pick it apart, find those uh, mechanical elements to craft certain things, mm -hmm. stuff like that. It even has some stealth elements in it. You, you'll see in the trailer or this gameplay session later on that in that same Last of Us way, you're able to crouch down real low, sneak up on enemies, shiv them from behind. But the difference in this one is that they come back to life. You can't just expect them to fall down and die. You have to burn the bodies. Even if you decapitate them, 
you have to burn the bodies for them to be fully dead. So pretty cool concept there. That's terrifying. Yes, it is. I uh, guess, to put it nicely. And from a gameplay perspective, it sounds like branches can open up within the world because it's this surreal environment where it's constantly warping and shifting. And because of that, separate paths open up and might actually offer some non-linearity as far as uh, you know the direction you want to take in the game, which is pretty cool that they're at least offering some of those moments. A lot of them are scripted, of course, but there are some moments where you uh, might open up a rift that someone else might not, it sounds like, which is pretty cool. Uh, the chat room might be talking about it because I yeah. think some people have actually played the Evil Within yeah. already. Um, yeah, I mean, it's gotten some very different feedback. Jay Flint's been talking a lot about Evil Within. Um, and I know Angle Ripper, I think, is saying the comments, or at least the gameplays he's seen on Twitch himself, has had negative opinions about okay. it. So w there is, like, some Mixed. contrast, I guess. Maybe it's not for everybody. I don't know what's being said or what's not working versus working in it. It sounds very promising. Yeah. I always like a nice crafting system. Um, and especially nonlinear stories as well. Just It's a matter of if it's implemented well or not. Yeah. Sometimes crafting systems can be very tedious. So that would be... A, a mark against it, I guess. Sorry, Brandon, we're not taking calls right now because we're talking about Evil Within. But yeah, I mean, just in the very beginning of the show tonight, we had somebody said it sucks, and then like 30 comments later, somebody said it's awesome. Yeah. So it, it seems to be a little bit mixed. As you guys can see on the screen right now, this is the moment where he was knocked unconscious by the main enemy, enemy and he's waking up in this terrifying world now with grotesque creatures and just... You know, those disgusting, like, Dark Soul-esque and Resident Evil-esque mm. designs that are, are going to uh, definitely make you feel uneasy if you're playing. Um, now, in a similar way to most survival horror games, you have su supplies like medical items that you can find in the environment. Those, of course, will sometimes restore your health, but I think it's kind of cool is they might have side effects, too, like hallucinogenic properties that will make the world even more crazy That's than before. That's an awful thing to have had yes. to take during like a nightmare building. Yes. And we take a hallucinogen. This is the perfect time to trip. Uh, and there's also these green vials that you'll find throughout the, the world that will upgrade your abilities. Uh, and then finally, weapons-wise, there are your standard ones like the revolver and the shotgun and a knife, like I said, for shiving if you sneak up on enemies, mm -hmm. grenades. But then there's just one really weird, weird one that's placed in there too. And it's called the Agony Crossbow. And this one is capable of shooting bolts of freezing, blinding, electrocuting, exploding ammunition. <laughs> so this is the one odd one out. Like, for some reason, every other weapon's normal, but then you got the Agony Crossbow, which is this weird supernatural weapon that can shoot all these different elements out mm. of it. Um, and like most survival horror games, of course, the ammo is scarce, but if you look for the mechanical components that I was talking about in the environment, then you can craft the electrical bolts, the freezing bolts, yeah. the, all those uh, kind of things. Jay Flint was mentioning in here, actually, that the crafting is primarily focused around, I guess, that crossbow okay. and the different arrow types that you can make. Yeah. Um, but you have to explore everywhere in order to find the right parts. Yeah. And uh, objects that you find in the environment can actually be used as distractions, too. I keep comparing it to The Last of Us, but in the same way, you could pick up bottles and bricks and throw them to create distractions. It's the same in the Evil Within. You can see right now, that was kind of stealthy right there. He was kneeling down, crouching, uh, keeping keeping out of sight with this... I think this guy has a chainsaw or something, so he's trying to, to dodge him oh, right now. Fun. And, uh... I mean, that's that's really the main gist on this game, and it really does seem to have mixed reactions right now. I'm very curious to see uh, when it comes out this Tuesday. They might have an embargo on it right now, maybe because they know the reactions are going to be mixed. But Tuesday, we'll probably find out, uh, you know, the final word on this game.